Well, we have come to the end of our course together in this last video, and uh, it's been a great honor and privilege for me to be able to spend these 18 days with you, and I hope that the course has been of as much value to you as it has been to me in preparing for it. We end appropriately enough with the spiritual practice, and the spiritual practice today, in Sir John Templeton's words, is become still and know. Become still and know. Now, this is, uh, this is a, these words are, uh, are well known uh, in many circles. They are a paraphrase of Psalm 4610 from the Hebrew Bible, where uh, in, in a Christian translation it reads, be still and know that I am God, exclamation point. I am exalted among, among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. And, and usually, this is a favorite uh, verse for contemplative people, contemplative souls. Usually the second uh, two parts of the verse are left to the side. Uh, and the be still and know that I am God uh, uh, part of that verse uh, of the of that psalm is is usually the part that's stressed and it seems to be a very clear directive to someone to become still to sit if you will under the Bodhi tree or to sit quietly in 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 the monastic cell or at least in one's mind and to know God to experience God's presence, and of course, as an as an injunction, this works very nicely. Uh, it's it's interesting to see that uh, Hindus of a certain generation who were raised uh, under the influence of Christian uh, missionaries and Christian schools, let's say Ramana Maharshi, uh, who was went to such a school in in the late part of the nineteenth uh, uh, century. Uh, this was a favorite verse of his. He often cited it, as he would say, when advising or telling people that they should become inwardly still and experience the, the presence of Atman. He would say, as the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Now, of course, this popular understanding is much more complex than that, and uh, even in the, uh, in the Christian translation, one can hear that this this is actually quite different. There is a contemplative dimension, but as Jewish commentary on the verse makes clear, this, this verse um, is describing uh, a, 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 an eschatological moment, a, a moment of great moment in which God uh, calls upon those who uh, are making uh, advances upon Jerusalem to desist, to stop, and to know that, uh, that He is God and that he, uh, because of his uh, defense of Jerusalem, will be exalted among the nations. So this is just an example of how the biblical text can be used in various ways, and perhaps none of that will, will stop. Uh, even, even Jewish sermons will often refer to uh, the contemplative dimensions of this passage. And so that's, uh, that, that, of course, is how Sir John reads it, and that's generally how people do read it. Be still and know. And of course, he's left out some of it as well. What, what, this is a, an extraordinarily clear and clean directive. It tells us exactly, if you will, how to attain the deepest state of meditative and contemplative awareness. Thus, it's being a favorite quotation from the Bible for such Hindu figures as Ramana Maharshi and others of a certain generation. And so this then can lead us into our practice, our final practice. And, in, and I would say that this final practice is the ultimate contemplative practice. It, it's an advanced spiritual practice, and yet because it's a, just because it's advanced doesn't mean that it's complicated. It's actually the simplest of practices. But it's that very simplicity that makes it so hard to attain without training and without practice. Uh, and uh, so the image I had used uh, in the last video was that of the uh, cleaning the mirror. Clean and see. Cleaning and seeing. So there's a smudgy mirror and we take a cloth and we, we, we clean away the smudges and we can see. Now, in Buddhism, this image gets, uh, gets interestingly uh, changed uh, by, uh, by later figures in Mahayana Buddhism. But we'll leave that aside for now since uh, uh, to go in that direction immediately would mean that we would, might try to go with a dirty, dirty mirror and we won't be able to see anything then. 
So uh, let us then come back to that place. Let's find again our place of contemplative stillness. We can, this is a close your eyes, sit under the, under the meditation tree, meditation. And let us become still again and find a place of stillness and begin as the Yoga Sutra will, would direct us to begin to turn within so that we can begin the, the yogic practice of samadhi or becoming deeply concentrated so that we can see. So, if you have time, you can do this on your own more extensively. Become aware of the breath. And stay with your breath for a few cycles. When your attention wanders away, just bring your attention back to the breath. And now you can transfer your awareness to the center of your chest, to your heart. And we can imagine that there's a cave in our hearts. There's a, a secret place in that cave. There's a, there's a flame. There's a, a gentle flame. And we focus our attention upon the flame at the center of the cave of the heart. This is a visualization meditation, adding a bit of visualization here. So imagine this thin flame with a thin stream of smoke and heat radiating upwards from it. And now, very helpfully, Whenever a thought or a memory or an impulse arises, just offer it to the flame. Again, my voice, the sensation perhaps, like now I'm aware of my toe or of my fingers. I'm thinking of lunch. Offer that gently to the flame. The flame connects the world of spirit in this image and the world of matter. And what we offer into the flame is, is, is subtleized, transformed from physical to subtle form. So whatever thoughts awaken or arise, whatever distractions come, offer them to the flame and, and stay focused on the flame until your mind becomes still. And this will be very difficult to do for any length of time, perhaps. There's always beginner's luck, however. No reason to fret. Just return to the practice. It's a skill to be learned like any other skill. We stay focused upon the flame at the center of the cave of the heart. And as our minds become calm, we'll notice that as we continue offering all of these distractions and thoughts, they start to become fewer and fewer until there's nothing left to offer except the stillness of the mind itself. And we can then drop the stillness of the mind and the image of the flame into the flame itself. And the flame dissolves. And what's left is just radiance in all direction. A golden stillness. A golden stillness that's alive with all the voices and all the insights and all the truths of all living beings that have lived in all galaxies. The whole of life is here. Nothing is separate. We are all here. There's no death here. The word death is just a word. This awareness never began. It never ends. It's not fragmented into this and that. 
This golden radiance is what life ultimately, it's the secret of life. It's the truth of all religions. It's the truth of all spirituality. It's blessedness, it's nirvana, it's salvation, it's oneness with God. And that's where I hope to leave you at the end of this course.